How's it going, everybody? My name is Tommy. I work for Esri in professional services, and we're at the UC this year. Um, I'm specifically working in the ArcGIS Enterprise area in the caching and vector tiles subtopic. So if you want to chat live with me, head on over there, and I'll be there the rest of the day. In the meantime, let's just have a quick chat about something that keeps coming up, and I wanted to talk about it now. So we've been getting a couple of questions in the chat, as well as some coworkers asking some very interesting caching relating questions. Uh, so we just want to take a second to record some videos that are going to be targeted to those very specific questions. We're going to try to keep these really short. That way we're not overwhelming with you with another one hour tech workshop to work through and weed through and try to figure out where to actually go from there. Um, so this question comes from one of our coworkers and they were trying to create a tiling scheme from a map that somebody else made online. They want to create some base maps that actually will mash up with this project. The key part here is we need to match a couple of things. We need to match the coordinate system. We need to match the um, levels of detail. And we need to match the um, tile size if we're going to be working inside 3D. But if this is just going to be in a 2D map, then we really only need to care about one more, and that is the origin. Well, what do we do if we don't know the tiling scheme? Well, we can do some creative little developer -y type things and open up the web map, crack open your developer tools, bounce over to this, Right, and just watch the traffic, and you're going to look for these tile server JSONs, right? So for a vector tile base map, which is the case for here, we've actually got a very specific tiling scheme, custom tiling scheme that was created for this web map. In this case, we're using the Equal Earth projection, and it's got some very specific levels of detail, some scales here. We want to create a custom tiling scheme file, and for that, we're going to do a couple different things. Let's just make sure that that matches our original tiling scheme and we're going to we're going to go back to that server json that vector tile server json All right so we're going to use this we're going to pull these scales and we also want to make sure that our map frame is using this uh well-known id or wkid all right let's go back to pro so we are in fact using the correct one and i'm just going to pull this one over to the other screen okay so we got the right coordinate system we have the right extent. We're just going to zoom all the way out. And when we're creating this tiling scheme file, we don't need to have any specific data in here. All we need, though, is just to pass in a map that is using the right, um, the right coordinate system. New with number of scales. Let's just make it a, a, an even 12. So the other thing that I'm seeing while this spins is the default origin that it came up with is a little different. So we're going to need to tweak that. So if we go back to that uh, vector tile JSON, you're going to notice here we have an X origin and a Y origin. So we want to pull this number for our X, that there. Pull this number for our Y, put that here. Stick with 96 DPI. Now you're going to say, oh, well, the, the tile info, the tile sizes are different. It's 512 by 512 here. Yeah, this is for vector tile. The vector tile, tile size is always going to be 512 by 512. That's, that's, a, that's okay. That's perfectly normal. What we are going to do, though, is we are going to change that to 256 by 256 for the raster tile version of this. Um, based on the kind of map that he's creating, let's do mixed with 75 and the compact format. That's cool. All right, now we just got to populate these scales with the scales from the JSON file. So we do that one. And I'll speed this part up, that way you don't have to suffer through this. Now we just need to come up with these last two. Um, again, all we, I just want to make sure that we've got a little bit of extra wiggle room if you've got the data that would support these extra levels of detail. What this person is trying to do with some, some of the resolution, uh, the data that we have with imagery, the resolution doesn't really warrant going further any, any further than, than uh, probably 300,000. So what we're going to do, though, is we're going to take this scale and we're going to do some really complex uh, math with it. Divide that by two. All right. Grab that. Put that in here. We divide that number by two. There we go. Put that right in there. Cool. Now we just got to pick an output location for it. And we will hit, let's put that in tile packages. Let's save. 
So once you have that XML file, you just fire up your managed tile cache geoprocessing tool, specify your map, equal earth, right? And then instead of letting it define the tiling scheme from like ArcGIS Online, navigate to where you save that XML file, and there you go. You pick your levels of detail. In this case, these pro these yeah, it'll probably just cache down to that one. That's good, right? And our minimum cache scale. Likewise, we'll just trim that back as well. Set your environment variable, and this is where you, this is where you can actually define how many threads will spin up and, and accomplish this task a lot faster. I've got mine set to 100%. I don't have anything else going on my computer right now, so I could dedicate all CPU usage to this task. Uh, but if you wanted to say dial this back to 50% or 75%, you could do that as well. Once that's all done, you hit run, let it cache and off you go. And if you want to create a tile package or go directly to tile package, uh, you could use the create map tile package tool. And in this case, you specify your map and under service, you browse to that tiling scheme file. And then you just specify the level of detail that you want to do. In this case, we're going to say uh, level 10. So we specify 10 there, type in your summary, the default extent. And again, I would highly recommend if you are going to create these tile packages, definitely create a TPKX. All right, folks, I think that'll do it for right now. If you like this, go ahead and smash that like button. I do hope to have more videos like this coming out on a more regular basis. And if you'd like to get a heads up when those drop, hit that subscribe button. For those of you attending the 2020 user conference, please enjoy the rest of the week, and the rest of the sessions, and uh, come on down to the Enterprise Expo and say hi. Hope to see you soon.